1. This is probably the creepiest and strangest thing to happen to me. Char now, this encounter happened when I was a lot older, around 17 or 18, I think. I was returning home from school and was waiting in the main hallway of the elevator. The main hallway in my flat building is pretty small. The middle of the room is fully taken by the elevator and on both sides it's surrounded by one set of stairs. One goes to the upper floor while the other one goes to the basement. Now, the basement is always really dark and even during the day it's pretty creepy. Not to mention, if you look down, you can clearly see a door that leads to the other half of the building and the laundry room. Going through that hallway always scared the crap out of me. It's way too narrow, with only a few lights. During my wait for the elevator, I remember I didn't check the mail, which was luckily on the wall behind me, so I just turned around and opened the box. While I was turning back to face the elevator, I noticed that the door in the basement was slightly opened. At first, I didn't think much of it. People forget to close it all the time, but when I focused a bit more on the space behind the door, that's when I saw it. Someone was standing there watching. Completely creeped out, I forgot the elevator and took the stairs instead. When I got home, I was freaking out. Originally, I tried to convince myself that it was nothing, that I just imagined that and I went about my day. But 30 minutes later, I get a message from John. Before that, we never messaged each other, since I had no idea it was him. I was kind of confused. This is a rough recollection of our conversation, and as unbelievable as it may look, he really did write all that. Did you see it? See what? Me in the basement hallway. Oh, that was you? Yeah, I did see you. What were you doing there? Nothing. Okay. I'm still down here, by the way. Okay. When I come down here, I'll wait for you. I didn't reply because I genuinely didn't know what to answer. I'm sorry, that was a bit too forward and creepy, huh? Yeah. After that, I immediately blocked him and went straight away to my mom who was in the kitchen. She was as confused as me when I told her everything and originally thought it was Giant, the older neckbeard brother from a story I'd written previously, and was about to go next door to talk with their mom but when I told her it was a younger brother, she looked even more confused. We knew Giant was always really creepy towards me, but now even his brother is starting to act out. We both agreed that those two are the creepiest people we've ever met and that I should keep him blocked. After that incident, I preferred to take the stairs and made sure to stay clear of the basement for a while. Honestly, to this day, I had no idea what to make of this encounter, and Lord knows what he wanted to do if I did come down. Honestly, what sane person would go down there? 2. So to preface this, a little background information on me is pertinent. I'm in my mid-twenties now, but spent my full life until this past year and a half very overweight. It impacted my social life, self-esteem, getting jobs, even my schooling because at some points I was too embarrassed to show up for classes. But finally, with some amazing help and support, I was able to eat healthy and take care of myself. And for the first time in as long as I can remember, I have felt confident and good about myself. So this September I did something I have always wanted to do, but never been in the place to do. I dressed up for our local renaissance festival. I had admired the costuming and design work people did forever, but would never have fit in or been brave enough to wear any of it, but this year I could. So I went on a Friday and splurged a little I had saved up, and came back Saturday with my group of friends dressed in some incredible pieces from real leather workers and designers. I felt so cool, indulge me. I even had a quiver and a bow to complete the ensemble. It was really fun. I can't shoot an actual bow, but would like to learn. While we were there, much to my surprise, some kids started asking to take pictures with me, which thrilled me and I was as excited as they were, so I posed very happily. This is where I'll introduce the cast. Neckbeard is self-explanatory. R, one of my best and oldest friends. One of the people who helped me through the hardest parts of my journey, and the person who knows me better than I know me. I was taking pictures with a pair of little girls when this man approached me. I didn't think it was weird, people at festivals are pretty friendly and will walk right up to you, 
and strike up conversation. But I did notice that he kind of got really close as I was posing with these little girls, to the point where their mom noticed him, thanked me quickly, and walked them away. I didn't pick up on anything really strange about him. He was a very large man, but I have a little extra empathy for people struggling with their weight, so it just made me more inclined to be kind. He had a reddish-brown beard, was dressed in a sort of tunic, and had a scabbard. Pretty cool looking. I'm really interested in original leather pieces. And at least the hilt of a sword. He wasn't ugly, but he didn't look the best groomed, and he sort of leaned down to talk to me. Which meant I got a face full of his breath. He'd been eating something really garlicky. I smiled and asked if I could help, and he asked if he could take a picture with me. I could see R giving him a bit of a funny look, but I tend to assume the best intentions of people. So I said, Sure, do you want to do a selfie? Or my friend can take it for us. Let's do both and see which looks better. Okay. Having fun at the festival? He proceeded to tell me all the events he had went to. He had had a lot to say, and to be honest, I don't remember all of it. But he mentioned he hadn't seen me at these before. This is my first time dressing up for one, so maybe I look different. You must. I'd have remembered a face like yours. Are you supposed to be Toriel? I realize now this is a character from the Hobbit movies. I had only seen the movie once, and she's not in the book, so I blanked. You come to a Renaissance festival, but you're a girl, and you don't know who Toriel is? R said, I don't know who that is either, so I guess you're the odd man out. I believe I was speaking to my elfling. Conflict makes me nervous, so I was trying to hurry the pictures along. At this point, he's really close to me, and has raised his arm to put around my shoulder, and he didn't reek or anything, but I realized he did smell pretty sharply of B.O., and his beard was actually itching my forehead, which made me feel uncomfortable, and R could tell. Okay, photo op is over. Why don't we all go back to my place after this, and we can watch The Hobbit? I don't live far, and it will be dark soon. You need to do some proper research if you're going to attend these things, and I'm happy to be your teacher. Nope. I babbled nervously, with a no thank you mixed in. He wouldn't let go of my shoulder and was looking down at me. But I guess I wasn't loud enough. What about you, little elf? <laughs> R is getting increasingly angry. Your woke friend doesn't have to come, I know the type. I go everywhere with her, sorry, I think we're going to meet up with some other friends later, but thank you for the offer. Sweet, I have been looking to meet fellow Renfesters. Photo's done, you can get your arm off her now, dude. I panic. I will when she asks me to. Anxiety. Literally, I can see her hyperventilating, stop. She's just shy, can't you tell? Maybe not used to a gentleman approaching her. Don't worry. You're in good hands, little girl. At this point, I recognize I definitely should have pried him off me, defended R, and or just left so I completely admit fault. I've never been in a situation like that, and I'm both a people pleaser and I get nervous. So I usually have a hard time saying no. He is also a little physically imposing, it's one of the reasons R is so protective. Low self-esteem, blah blah blah. So please don't judge me too harshly. It's something I'm actively working on. Because I'm an idiot, he ends up walking with his arm still around me to an event we all planned prior to a meet, a joust. My friends are confused when we arrived with the neckbeard, and before anyone can even talk, he introduces himself as the little elf's escort, at which point R has had enough. He actually just invited himself, and OP is too nice to wipe the gum off of her shoe. I don't hear her complaining. I don't want to be rude, I say, finally. But I really don't want to be touched, and you did invite yourself along. I'm sorry for not saying something sooner. The neckbeard actually gives me a little shove away at this point. You led me on. I'm sorry, it wasn't my intent. Her silence doesn't mean she's cool with it. You should remember that with people in the future, because you're going to annoy a lot of people like that. You're making it sound like I molested her. All I did was be friendly. Friendly would have been thanking her for the picture and leaving. Whatever. She's kind of fat anyways. And then he left. Literally just walked off. 
Moral of the story is, don't be afraid to tell someone if they're making you uncomfortable. R said it best, Sometimes people will take your silence to mean you're okay with something, so you have to speak up for yourself. I have a couple of other stories and encounters from both the Ren Fairs and a convention we attended recently. But this was by far my first, and by the end of it, I think I had learned a pretty good lesson. And the overall experience was so fun. I can't wait for next year's. 3. So this story starts off a few years ago, while I was still in high school. But it reaches its, hopefully, conclusion just last year. Back in high school, I was quiet and kept to myself. I wasn't one to approach others, to make friends, letting others approach me if they so chose. Not many people did, but that was okay. Those that did were typically pretty nice, but it never really sprouted into any friendships. That was until I met Nick in my junior year of high school. Now, for a visualizer, I am Korean, very small, and back then, presented as pretty feminine. Long hair, cute glasses, and pretty clothes that conformed to a strict dress code. Not quite uniform, it just had to be proper. I guess is the best way to describe it. Nick was an average height and built white guy. Shaggy mid-length hair, and wore plain slacks and a polo shirt. I didn't know him prior to junior year at all, so I didn't have the faintest idea of what I was getting into when I let him strike up our first conversation. He was very polite when he introduced himself, so I reciprocated. We mostly talked about the previous school year and our goals for the upcoming year. Just normal, friendly chit-chat. The next few weeks were just conversations about how classes were going and how we were adjusting back into a regular schedule. For someone who didn't really have close friendships, it was really nice to have someone I could just talk with about things. Gradually, we talked more and more about our interests outside of school. We both liked to draw, we liked anime, and we liked the same movies. Sure, he was a little weird, but there was nothing inherently off-putting. Well, I guess he got really comfortable after those first few weeks, and he asked me where I was from. Me being the idiot I am, answered with the town I was born in, which wasn't the town I lived in. He laughed as if I had told the funniest joke he'd ever heard and said, No, what country? Oops, my bad. When I told him I was from Korea, he scrunched his nose and after a moment of silence said, I guess that's okay. Now, this was definitely weird to hear, but I didn't think too much of it. The next few days were uneventful, and normal, until he came up to me after class and asked, What is your ideal type? I didn't know what this meant, so I asked him to clarify. He huffed and said, Your ideal type of guy. You're Korean, and you don't know what that means. I was shocked. His tone had an aggressive feel to it, and I didn't like it. I wasn't a confrontational person at the time, so I just opted for an apology. I said I was sorry, and that I had never had a question like that before. He says, It's a common question over here. What do you mean? I informed him that while I was born there, I was raised in the Midwest United States by a white family. I knew virtually nothing about the culture or life over there. I was very much an American, just like he was. He seemed disappointed in that answer and walked off before I could actually answer his question. The next few days carried on as if nothing had happened, so I quickly forgot about the incident. He eventually approached me again and asked me the same question, so I responded this time. Sweet, livelier than me, but not over the top, strong, very basic traits. He hardly let me finish answering before starting on about his own ideal type. Pretty, very feminine, quiet and shy, clingy and loyal. The list got so specific and long that I couldn't keep up until he said what really caught my attention. Japanese women are my ideal woman, but Korean is okay. I didn't know how to respond. Not that he would have even given me time to before going on again. He goes on about how Asian women are submissive and quiet and will do anything to please their husband or boyfriend. How they know their place below their man. When I tried to tell him that was a misinformed stereotype, he cut me off and said, You wouldn't even know. You were raised by white people. 
I was so shocked that I couldn't even think of how I should respond, so I just walked away from him. He approached me the next day and showed me a photo of his phone of either a Korean singer or actor and asked if I thought he was attractive. I said that I did and he immediately flew into a rant about how Korean men are abusive and disrespectful to their women and how they don't deserve beautiful and kind Korean women. This was the same guy who the day before talked about how Asian women know their place below men and how they're pretty much subservient to them. I told him such a sweeping generalization was incredibly ignorant, but he refused to accept it. I told him I didn't want to hear it and walked away. Now around this time I had started getting close to another classmate from a different class, Caleb. After we were paired up for a class assignment, he was an intimidating looking guy, very tall and already had quite a bit of facial hair for a teen. To top it off, he just looked like he was always mad. He wasn't the type of guy I'd approach on my own had I not been paired up with him. He was shy and sweet, a teddy bear built like a brick wall as far as I'm concerned. I adored him in every way and we quickly caught on with each other. We started dating soon after Nick's rant about Korean men, so it was a good enough excuse for me to start distancing myself. I didn't outright tell him I was with Caleb and instead told him I was too busy studying to talk online. Which wasn't a full lie, Caleb and I usually only ever hung out to study, with a few outings together here and there. A very chill relationship. When he did eventually figure it out for himself, he went on a rant to me on Facebook, complaining that women only ever want the abusive types, and that I've clearly been brainwashed by American dating culture, because I didn't choose the right guy that would take care of me, like my culture would have told me to. I don't know where he was getting all these ideas about Asian women from, but it freaked me the hell out. I told him I was done talking to him and to leave me alone. He did for the most part, completely avoiding me in school but occasionally complaining to me about my relationship online. Eventually I just blocked him. After that I didn't really have any issues with him. I didn't really see him much after school thanks to moving to a nearby town. Fast forward several years and I've since changed my name and look nothing like I did in high school, so when Nick ended up being hired in at the same job as me, I figured he wouldn't even recognize me. Caleb and I broke up in high school, on good terms, and after a few years even he didn't recognize me after seeing me about a year or so prior. While I was wrong, he approached me on the first day he noticed me and addressed me by my old name. I shook my head and said no, and told him my new name. He seemed to accept the answer and walked away. Cool, bullet dodged. Wrong. He came up to me the next day and asked if we went to school together. Again, I shook my head. He said he could have sworn that I was the person he knew by my old name. Again, I told him my name, he shrugged it off and left. Keep in mind, he wasn't even under the same supervisor as me and had no actual business in my workplace so I knew he was only approaching me because it was me. He kept trying, even outside of work whenever he happened to see me running errands, small town, everyone shops at the same store. He would always address me by my old name and try to talk to me no matter how many times I told him my new name, it is Korean, and that I wasn't interested in talking to him. I swear if he knew how to spell my new name, he would have found my new social media accounts and harassed me there too. Eventually, I went to my supervisor about the issue, but all he said was that he'll have to talk to Nick's supervisor about it. I never heard anything about it after that. This behavior went on for about six months before he was let go, albeit not for the constant harassment. He no longer lives in the same city as me from what I've heard from other co-workers that had spoken with him, so maybe I won't have to deal with him again. So far, so good. 4. This happened back in August of 2022. It was in the middle of the month and I was leaving for college in less than a week. Because of this, I was going to miss visiting my younger cousins for their 10th birthday. They're my only family on my mom's side that isn't in another country, and they live in the city, so we try to see them when we can. I noticed from the last couple of times I saw them that 
they were watching Naruto on Netflix. And with their school starting up soon, I figured that they would be spending less time watching TV, so I decided to get them the manga version to read. I also picked up the first three volumes of One Piece, Omnibus, for them to try out, of which they are now huge fans. I walk in and head up onto the second floor, pick out my manga, and browse for less than five minutes before heading downstairs to check out. I reached the checkout line and noticed there was something going on. There were two people ahead of me, a middle-aged woman in front who was second in line, and a man currently arguing with the cashier over something. The man must have been somewhere between the ages of 25 to 35, wore large baggy cargo shorts and a bright red shirt, and had a ginger beard along his neck, though not too wild. Think Burger Andy, only slightly less overweight. He was yelling at the cashier, a frail young girl who I couldn't ever see being older than 18, about the decks of cards that were behind the counter. Apparently, he had been requesting one of them, but she was unfamiliar with them and couldn't find the right pair. Neckbeard was increasingly growing angrier by the second, just desperate to get his precious cards, demeaning this poor cashier for no reason fumbling over his words. No, it's not. Why would I want that? It's not that hard. The bottom pair. No, not that one! The woman ahead of me, along with some onlookers, were all bewildered to this going on, and eventually he reached the breaking point, throwing his hands up in the air and shouting, You know what? Screw this! And screw you! And threw his books that he had onto the counter in front of the girl before storming out. The other older woman scolded him for his attitude, and he proceeded to flip her off before he reached the doors. The woman went to another cashier, and I went to the girl, and I asked if she was all right. She was, but was just pretty bewildered that it had happened. Also, I noticed what books he was looking to check out that were sitting right in front of me at the register. They were manga, I could tell, and upon a closer look, I could tell that it was some sort of etchy, which is basically softcore adult material. I couldn't tell you exactly what it was, I vaguely remember the word sister and cute being in the title. I pay and walk out to my car, and when I get there, I notice the neckbeard in the next row of cars over, talking loudly with someone on the phone. Yeah, I know it's bull. I come all the way out here for this, and they ruin it. Ah, man. I think he mentioned going back in, and I wish I had stayed for that if he did. But I had somewhere to be, so I left. This has been the only sort of thing to happen to me, and I don't think I'll ever forget it. Hellfreezer's note, I'm not sure if I pronounced etchy correct, but given the nature of it, I'm definitely not going to look it up. 5. To give you some details about me and help set up the neckbeard story, my name is Gwen, and I'm a 19-year-old trans person, male to female. And I have good progress with my transition, which is helped by the fact that I was pretty feminine for a guy. I'm also tall, which gives me the look of a tall female. I'm like 6'4", or 193.04 centimeters. I've been a major nerd and a major gamer my entire life. Now with the story. I was recently out with my older sister to go out and buy hair dye because I like dyeing my hair and I trust her to do it. I usually do more unnatural colors, but my sister convinced me to pick out more natural colors. So we got some more natural dye, or however you'd put it. The hair dye place was nearby, the classic gamer grounds. So I convinced my sister on I was going to check out the GameStop for any sales. I play all kinds of different platforms, but I'm currently in the market for a Switch or the new Xbox. Was hoping maybe one or the other got returned, so we could get it at a discount. The moment me and my sister entered the store, we got hit by a smell that could only be described as horrific. <coughs> I should have known what it was, as I've watched many tales of neckbeers, but sadly, I was a fool, and my lust for a new console was far greater than my self-preservation. Enter he, the neckbeard himself. 
I quickly spotted the source of the foul smell coming from a shortish, overweight guy. There was only hair on his head that was in a ponytail and a very bushy neck beard that seemed to refuse to grow any higher. I at first don't judge because I had a little bit of a phase in high school, but I throw that more into my depression kicking my rear then. I wanted frame eye contact and try not to talk to him. But I forgot some details. I'd just entered a GameStop. I'm tall, female, pasty, have colorful blue and pink hair, and most of all, I had another shorter female with me. The guys were staring, but I wasn't too phased, just knew I couldn't avoid the neckbeard realizing my presence. Me and my sister swiftly made our way to the counter and talked to the clerk, who was an average-looking guy. We asked if they had any used Switches or Xbox Series X in stock, to which he told us no. I'm pretty sure the neckbeard heard the conversation and decided to wait his time. Me and my sister just decided we look at Switch games because she really needs more. When we were talking about certain games and talked about others, I guess this is when the neckbeard decided to strike. His voice was booming. But if you deal with Xbox parties and small children, it wasn't too much of a scare. I heard you were looking for an Xbox and a Switch! His voice booming with some sly hints. I answered, like an idiot. Also, I speak with a country accent for those who might be curious. Mm-hmm, and whatever you're up to, I ain't interested. I figured that would be enough to make him lose interest, but I don't think he got the memo. Come, I'll buy you two fine ladies these consoles if you do me a favor. Mm. He's being more gross. It made me uncomfortable, and I swore I heard the licking of lips from him. My sister is shorter than me and is even sassier. She snapped at him with, What the hell? What would you even want from us? The neckbeard leaned and I could feel his dragon breath through my hoodie. I understand you two are dating, and I respect that. So I just want to be able to watch and be intimate from a distance. Then he placed a hand on my shirt and my exposed wrist I quickly yelled, what the hell, she's my sister! Which was followed by me wiggling from his sweaty grasp and straight up backhanding him. I was in fight or flight mode and I guess I chose fight. To avoid any further issues, I was hurried out by my sister and we practically sprinted to the car. We left and it's been a good while. I haven't gone to a GameStop for a good bit and I plan on keeping it that way. I did most of my game shopping online anyhow, so not much of a loss. I hope this was interesting to listen to, even if a tiny bit. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Neckbeards in the Wild. Episode 18. Yeah, I don't think it actually is technically 80, I'm sure I missed one somewhere. But we'll say episode 80. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Before you go, please do share the video with friends and family, and hit the like button, in any order you like, really. If you would like to get early access to these videos, then you can get that by supporting me on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description, for as little as a dollar or more a month. You get all the videos at once on a Monday. You'll also find a link in there to the Hellfreezer Discord, as well as a link to the Hellfreezer Merchandise Store to get yourself some amazing Hellfreezer merchandise. Just put a new hoodie up there if you'd like to go check it out. Assuming it's showing. They don't always show right away, but I think it's showing now. And if you really enjoyed today's video, you can leave a tip by clicking on the heart with a dollar sign underneath the video. Okay, no other bits and bobs today, so let's move right along to Hellfreezer's question of the day. And today's question is... What is your next major purchase? You might not buy it for a long, long time, but it's like, yep, that's what I'm getting. I think for me it's probably going to be a camera that does both photo and video. I've got one all picked out. I was planning to buy a while back, but I had some expenses, like new bed. had to set up an office, that sort of thing. Um, but that's definitely the thing I'm after next. And hopefully it won't be super long until I get it, but it might be. It could be a couple of years, to be honest with you. But 
I do have my phone, and I will actually be recording some video on that in the near future. So why don't you let me know what yours are, if you're comfortable sharing in a comment below. And before we go, let's have the answer of the day from a previous video. And this comes from Neckbeards in the Wild 79. And this was in relation to forms of entertainment that is objectively bad, but you still enjoy it, which is really all that matters. And today's answer comes from Linksy Dove. I love the original Charmed as well, that was my answer, and have been watching the reboot recently as well. I gave it a shot, it just didn't click for me after a season. While it's got a lot of the same concepts and everything, the main characters are pretty different people than the other sisters. I've tried reading the graphic novels, but I could not get into them. Other cheesy content I like, Beetlejuice, the movie, the cartoon, was semi-cute at first, but got quickly boring. Don't tell my fiancé that, they love that. Police Academy movies, 1 to 6. The last two were so bad I couldn't bear it. 80s teen movies like Weird Science, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Gremlins 1 and 2, only at Christmas time, Scrooged, Ghostbusters 1 and 2, tried the newer ones, couldn't get into them. Thank you very much for your answer, links it up. Uh, I didn't much care for the 2016 reboot. I gave it a chance after all the hubbub died down. I thought I'd give it a chance, judge for myself. And I guess it must have been a traffic jam that day because there were so many talented people on that project. But I don't think any of them actually made it into the writer's room, so I'm assuming they're all stuck in traffic. Uh, I did enjoy Afterlife. I haven't seen the new one yet, but I will watch it eventually. The Vague Undefined eventually. And with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourself.